Star Wars 7x7 episode 2521. It's time for a Bad Batch briefing. We're going to be talking about Rampage, which is episode 5 from season 1 features. Someone old, someone new, and possibly settles in to a foundational element of the series going forward. Punch it. <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is a full spoiler briefing for Rampage. If you haven't checked it out yet, then you know by all means do and then come back. <laughs> and if you have checked it out or you're just okay with me diving into spoilers, then let's go. So this episode actually is a bit shorter than the rest of the episodes. It clocks in around 24 minutes on the Disney Plus app, but... Of that, I did not do the math, but, you know, it goes through all of the, you know, other countries and the various performers who do the voices in different languages and so on and so forth. And that actually goes on for a while. It's amazing how many countries do that. And it's also kind of funny, I think, personally, that the cr normal credits just say D. Bradley Baker as the Bad Batch. But then a lot of the other countries will say, like... Heinrich is Wrecker, and Heinrich is Echo, and Heinrich is Hunter, and Heinrich is Tech. Like, it just lists it all out, and it's just for the same guy. It's pretty funny. So the plot revolves around the fact that the Bad Batch need to know what the deal is with the bounty hunter they encountered in the previous episode, and so there's apparently a contact they can check out that the Jedi used previously, and it's someone named Sid, a green Trandoshan who is on the planet Ord Mantell, and if that... Planet name rang a bell with you, it might be because from The Empire Strikes Back when Han is deciding to leave the Rebellion and he says, well, that bounty hunter we ran into on Ord Mantell changed my mind. So that's where you've heard it before. And Sid does not cop to being Sid when she's initially questioned by members of the Bad Batch, but Omega walks over to her and goes, you're Sid. And <laughs> Sid is like, oh, you're pretty perceptive. And so this, of course, is going to add more fodder to the question of whether Omega is force sensitive or whether she just, you know, has some sort of heightened sensitivity that, you know, like we've talked about here on the show, may combine elements of the various Bad Batch members, for example. And she's just, you know, a super advanced clone in that regard. But, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Still building to something. Anyway, Sid, by the way, is voiced by the delightful Rhea Perlman. You may remember her all the way back as Carla from Cheers and is, uh, you know, oh, just so much fun. And, you know, I heard the voice and I was like, oh, gosh, it sounds so familiar. And when she shows up in the credits, you're like, yes, it's Rhea Perlman. And the way things are set up, this is probably not the last time we're going to hear from her. And so once her identity has been revealed and the Bad Batch tells her what they need, we end up in a classic version of The Mandalorian Season 2, which is a quid pro quo situation. Oh, I'll tell you what I can find out about this bounty hunter if you do a job for me, right? And we also get the classic trope of the you know bit of information left out that makes things that much more complicated. <laughs> And then the person gets called on at the end because the moochie that has to be found for this job for the Bad Batch to do is not a slave that's being held by these Zygarians and going to be sent away. It's actually an adolescent ranker monster. And, you know, that of course makes you wonder, oh, well, what about Patissa? Patissa being the ranker that we meet in Return of the Jedi. I don't know the lifespan of rankers, but... Yeah, so that's a separate side thing. But anyway, Mulchi is, Muchi is an adolescent ranker, and it leads to a rather amusing scene of, you know, how the Bad Batch are actually going to capture Muchi and, you know, tame it. And Tex says, oh, you know, they're very, you know, societally hierarchical, and there has to be an alpha. And so it basically becomes a slugfest between Moochie and Wrecker, where they're just pounding each other like, you know, exhausted heavyweights in the 12th round of a fight. But that doesn't happen, of course, until there are shenanigans with the Zygarians who manage to capture the Bad Batch minus Omega. And this time, refreshingly, things get flipped on their head. So Omega isn't disappearing. She's actually the one who ends up being able to save them this time around. And we are continuing to get deeper into the series in the sense of 
things that we have already seen in teasers and trailers and whatnot appearing in the episodes themselves and so subsequent episodes are becoming you know more and more of a mystery like there was a scene in this one where Rainy who is the leader of these Zygarians is getting into a fight with Hunter with that electro whip and that had been shown previously so now that's <laughs> checked off of everything and of course ultimately the Bad Batch is able to defeat the Zygarians and capture Muchi and bring Muchi back for Sid. Sid is actually being employed for this job. There's a bounty on Muchi. And we find out that Sid's employer in this regard is Jabba the Hutt. And we find this out actually a little bit early in the show if you listen to the audio description version. If you have that turned on, then the first appearance of a representative of Jabba is actually named like you just see sort of you know from behind and then part of the face and you don't necessarily know that it's Bib Fortuna but the audio description actually identifies him as Bib Fortuna early on in that first appearance in the show and Matthew Wood returning to the role so that's awesome playing it both in the Book of Boba Fett and now in <laughs> the Bad Batch as he's done before too but you know it's fun to see it continue onward. Anyway, the audio description thing, to stick with that for a moment, they're actually translating some of the dialogue that is spoken in other languages. So you hear Bib Fortuna speaking in Hatiz, but in that initial thing, he says, uh, the time has come, the mighty Jabba wants answers, where is his precious Mo Muchi? Actually, you know what, I'm sorry. Uh, the first time he appears, he says, my employer is impatient, what's the delay? Right? And then later on when he appears, it's that the time has come the mighty Jabba wants answers. Where is his precious Muchi? And then there's a later one where, you know, he refers to Muchi as uh, my sweet girl and says, uh, come Muchi, it's time to go home. And these are things that he says in Hatiz, but they are translated for us by the audio description, not in the captions, but by the actual audio description. And it's not just done for Bib Fortuna. It also happens later in the show when they free the slaves, when, you know, the Bad Batch breaks free and the other slaves are freed and Tech has to figure out how to talk to them in their language, Feline, and he's able to do it with a translator thing and it actually like, has him talking in the Feline language but the auto description gives a follow them, they'll help you in English for you too. They reply with a thank you for helping us. So yeah, I have to say, I think that's new. I don't think we get translations, um, like for example with The Mandalorian, I don't think we got translations of things so I particularly like that. I think that's very cool. And then, you know, the end of the show, when they, you know, finally check in with Sid, they find out that it's Fennec Shand, but that, you know, we don't know who the bounty hunter is working for, just that Sid says her contacts in the guild, presumably the bounty hunters guild, say that she's working on a direct commission. Personally, to me, that feels like it's more evidence, circumstantial, <laughs> but more evidence in favor of the notion that the Kaminoans, the Kaminoans, excuse me, have been the ones to hire Fennec Shan to get Omega back, but more to learn. But Sid says, hey, you know, you got somebody on your back like that, you're going to need friends and money and mostly money. And Hunter says, you know, we don't have much of, you know, either. And Sid says, well, you know, if you need the work, I can help you out. And that is where we get to something that could become a foundational element for the series. So we've talked about how the initial log line of the show as announced was that they would you know, learn to you know, adapt and survive in this new world. And I think the word mercenary or a variation of it is mentioned you know, originally, like way back before the show ever came out. And so now we've set up a situation where the Bad Batch has performed well for Sid. Sid apparently gets you know, these kinds of jobs and you know, bounties in some case, so they're almost basically becoming bounty hunters in their own way and so you know to be able to earn money and take care of themselves like they may have found their situation and that's why I think that Sid's probably going to come up in a few more episodes because as they need money to take care of themselves they can always hire themselves out to Sid and there are a couple of ominous things that happen in the show as well that are you know set up for later situations basically Sid since we were just talking about her saying oh if a bounty hunter like that is after you you guys must be worth a lot and that, of course, gets her a dirty look from Hunter, and she's like, I can keep secrets. So, you know, we'll see whether it's worth more to Sid to keep them around or to sell them out. 
Probably keep him around, I think, is where we're going to be at this point. But the other ominous thing that's being set up for a later thing is Hunter continuing to have, not Hunter, excuse me, Wrecker. Wrecker continuing to have headaches. So there's a moment early on in the show where Hunter is like rubbing the side of his head and kind of going, oh, and he's asked, you know, what the deal is. It's like, ah, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Ah, but he's definitely rubbing his head like he's in pain. And it seems like they're setting up a situation where the switch is going to flip and the Order 66 thing is finally going to kick in at a later point. And maybe that's going to be something that would be the genesis for them to figure out how to extract chips from clones, which then, you know, leads to the possibility of doing so for Crosshair, etc., etc. But that, of course, is way down the line. <laughs> Uh, that, however, is just about everything that's worth chatting about in Rampage, which is episode five, again, from season one of The Bad Batch, and that's going to do it for this briefing on the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.